We've got 30 acres of land out here. When we started building our house about six months ago, we knew one thing for sure. We needed Wi-Fi, not just in one spot, everywhere. Our Starlink router is set up in the cabin where we lived during construction. It worked fine in there, but as soon as you stepped out toward the build site, dead zone. And I wasn't about to run 500 feet of cable through dirt and trees just to get online at the house site. So we installed this, the Wavlink X3000 Outdoor Wi-Fi 6 Extender. I meant to make a review back then, but honestly, we just got busy building the house. Now that the house is almost done, and we've been using this extender for about half a year, I figured it's time to finally tell you how it worked. I'll show you how we installed it, how far the signal actually reaches, what surprised me, and whether it's something I'd trust again on a property this big. Let's start with the unboxing, and then walk through the install. So here's everything that came in the box. First, the main unit. Compact, clean, solid feel. Then, six antennas. And what's nice is they're actually labeled. Three marked 2.4 GHz, three marked 5 GHz. You also get a short Ethernet cable, zip ties, a PoE injector, mounting bracket, and a printed instruction manual that's surprisingly clear. Everything was packed tight, no rattling. I liked the first impression. It felt like a real, well-made product. First step screw on the antennas. Each one has a clear label and each port on the unit is also marked. So you just match them, 2.4 GHz antennas to 2.4 ports and same for 5 GHz. They go on easily, just finger tight. Once all six are on, the unit looks kind of like a little Wi-Fi porcupine. Not exactly pretty, but we're not going for pretty. We're going for signal. Next up, mounting it outside. The main reason I got this unit wasn't just to get better Wi-Fi on my phone, we needed reliable internet coverage across the construction site to run security cameras. There's a lot of material out here, and at night, we wanted to keep everything safe. We already had power at the site, but no signal. Starlink didn't reach this far. So, what I did was run about 100 feet of ethernet cable from our temporary cabin, where we were living while building, out to the spot where I planned to mount the Wavlink. That would place the extender high up, right at the edge of where the cameras needed coverage. I attached the unit to a 10-foot post, which I secured directly to one of our solar panel supports. I used the included paper screw template to mark the holes. Once the bracket was in place, I slid the unit on and started running the ethernet. There's a weatherproof gland at the bottom. Important detail. You slide the cable through the outer ring, then the rubber gasket, then the plastic clamp. Once the cable's plugged in, you screw everything tight and it creates a solid, sealed connection to keep water out. The lights on the unit turned on right away. Next step, browser setup. Once the unit was wired and powered, I grabbed my laptop and immediately saw a new Wi-Fi signal called something like Wavlink. This wasn't our network yet. It's the signal being broadcast by the unit itself, ready for initial setup. I connected to it. And right away, without typing anything, it automatically opened a browser window and loaded the Wavlink setup page. No apps, no digging for IP addresses, it just opened. From there I walked through the setup, chose my country and time zone, I created a new admin password to log in later, gave my new Wi-Fi network a name, set a strong password for the Wi-Fi itself. Once that was done, I clicked save, and the system began saving and applying settings. It took maybe two or three minutes. During that time, the unit restarted and connected itself to the internet. When the reboot finished, I had to reconnect to the new network name I just created, now with my custom Wi-Fi password. After reconnecting, I logged into the unit again using my new admin password and got access to the full control panel. From there, you can check your signal strength, see how many devices are connected, update firmware, or go into advanced settings. But honestly, I didn't touch most of that. Everything worked right out of the box. Setup took less than five minutes, and that was the part that really surprised me. No weird errors, no crashing, just connect, name it, save it, and it runs. So, overall, I'm really glad I found this thing. It did exactly what I needed. Gave me solid Wi-Fi coverage across the entire construction site, connected to all the security cameras, and just worked. Coverage-wise, I've got cameras more than 300, even 400 or 500 feet away, and they all stay connected. 
When I was setting them up, I checked speeds on my phone and laptop at those distances. I didn't do a full lab test, but every time I checked, I was getting around 100 megabits per second, even at the far end of the site. Alright, that's pretty much the whole story. And the truth is, on big land like this, sometimes even cell signal doesn't reach. That's where having strong Wi-Fi coverage makes a real difference. If you've got similar challenges, a big backyard, remote corner of your land, a shed, RV, or outbuilding that needs signal, this might be exactly what you're looking for. Got questions? Drop them in the comments. If you've tried something similar, I'd love to hear how it worked for you. And if you're into DIY builds and real world tech like this, feel free to subscribe. I'll be posting more as we finish the house and build out the full system. Thanks for watching. Hope your Wi-Fi stays strong, no matter how far out you are.